In this problem, we're going to do an integral using trigonometric substitution. So the first thing to do is to think of the integral as follows. This is e to the x, and then we have a square root, and then 1 minus e to the x quantity squared dx. So you see it fits the form a squared minus u squared. And whenever you have an integral that fits this form, you can let u be equal to a sine theta, and things should work out. So in this problem, we really have a 1 squared. So our a is 1, and our u is e to the x. So the substitution we're going to make is e to the x equals, and then a is 1, so we're just going to get e to the x equals sine of theta. Now we'll take the derivative of both sides. So on the left-hand side, we get e to the x dx. And on the right-hand side, we get cosine theta d theta. So let's see. We've got e to the x dx. So that part's taken care of. So e to the x dx. We just have to deal with this. Now, a lot of people memorize um, what this is using this substitution. I like to work it out every single time. So 1 minus e to the x squared. That's really the square root of 1 minus sine squared. And 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. So this is the square root of cosine squared. And so we just get cosine theta. So now we're ready to rewrite our original integral. So we have the integral of, let's see, e to the x dx, that's just cosine theta d theta. And then this piece here, this we said was, we worked it out down here, we said was cosine theta. So we get cosine theta times cosine theta d theta. Cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine theta squared, or cosine squared theta. <laughs> and then we have to use an identity. So this is equal to the integral of 1 half 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And then we still have the d theta. Let's break this up. This is the integral of 1 half d theta plus, and then we have the integral of 1 half cosine 2 theta. And then we still have the d theta. Kind of a fun problem. Uh, we integrate the first one, so we get 1 half theta. And to integrate cosine of 2 theta, you just divide by 2. So this will be plus 1 half. And now we're dividing by 2, so we're going to get 1 fourth. And then sine 2 theta plus c. Right? The derivative of sine is cosine. And when you have a number here, you just divide by that number. OK. At some point, we're going to have to draw a triangle, but we have this pesky sine 2 theta. So we have to use another identity to write this in terms of sine and cosine. So this is equal to 1 half theta plus 1 fourth. And then the sine of 2 theta is just 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then we still have the plus c. So this is equal to 1 half theta. The 2 cancels with a 4, so we end up with plus 1 half sine theta cosine theta plus c. All right, we're almost there. So now we're going to use our original substitution. We said that e to the x was sine theta. Let me write that backwards. So sine theta is equal to e to the x. And we want to think of this as e to the x over 1. And then using so ka toa, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we can draw a uh, nice little triangle. So here's our little triangle. So this is theta. And so let's see, the opposite is going to be e to the x. And the hypotenuse is 1. So if you call this b, you can use the theorem of Pythagoras to find b. So we know that 1 squared is equal to e to the x squared plus b squared. Subtracting this guy, we end up with b squared equals 1 minus, and then e to the x squared is simply e to the 2x. And so b is the square root of 1 minus e to the 2x. You might say, hey, that's what we had at the beginning of the problem. 
yeah, that usually works uh, out in these problems. So in this case, I filled in the triangle. B is equal to the square root of 1 minus e to the 2x. All right, now we're going to go back and finish the question. So this is equal to 1 half. Now, what is theta? Let's see. If the sine function takes theta to e to the x, then the arc sine function takes e to the x back to theta, right? It's the inverse sine. They undo each other. Again, if the sine function takes theta and gives you e to the x, the arc sine function takes e to the x and gives you back theta. So theta is simply the arc sine of e to the x. Then we still have this 1 half. And the sine of theta, we know what that is. That's e to the x. And the cosine of theta, let's see, so ka toa. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, here's our adjacent, this little tiny b. So it's adjacent. So 1 minus e to the 2x over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So I won't bother writing it. And then we have our arbitrary constant, c. Really nice problem, uh, kind of a cool problem. So um, I hope that made sense.